number one. AOL, it's all good. Hi, and welcome to Ghost Seekers. I'm your host, Charles Parley. This is a show that makes the supernatural a little more natural. We want to uh, explore many aspects of the spiritual realm, uh, particularly as it applies to looking into the world of ghosts and uh, are we going to be able to see them, see what they are, and uh, maybe be a little less afraid of them. Uh, with me today is a friend and colleague of mine for his uh, first visit to our show. Uh, his name is Matt Payne. Matt is an avid uh, researcher of the spiritual realm. Matt is a follower of Thoth, a, uh, the god of wisdom and knowledge. And he also considers himself a practitioner of hedge magic. So I think you're going to enjoy the comments that uh, Matt brings to our show. A lot of wisdom. And for sure, after you uh, listen to Matt's discussion here today, I'm sure that it's going to bring some questions from you. You're welcome to write into us at the address that will be on the screen a little later. Uh, we'll be back right after these messages. These days, you're working harder than ever. Yeah. You need a truck. Well, just like his mom. And we're back on Ghost Seekers. Again, I'm Charles Parley, and with me today is Matt Payne. And Matt, uh, as you know, I have quite an interest from my travels in Egypt on the ancient Egypt philosophies, and particularly with as it relates to the show that we're putting together here uh, on Ghost Seekers. Um, we're interested in the that stage of the afterlife between life and uh, in, a, in an, an, an eternal death. And uh, the ancient... Uh, Egyptians really seem to uh, have it down, uh, from what I can understand. What, are you, what is your experience with uh, with that process of uh, atonement or whatever you might might call it in that that uh, stage of the afterlife? Uh, trying to 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 get to that stage, to trying to get to the point where you're ready to go into the heart ceremony. In general, it, it does require you. Again, to, for the listen, uh, viewers who might not be aware of the heart ceremony, can you just give us a, the Reader's Digest version? It's the, the, the first step in the Egyptian afterlife. You are brought before the god Anubis. He weighs your heart against a peacock feather. If you're deemed worthy, you continue on to the next step to try to get that, that uh, um, eternal life or that, that paradise or their version of it. And it was such a, a difficult process for them, that um, to, to walk this path it also of, uh, quite often required you to do great sacrifices. Um, and and that type of thing shows up in a lot of different religions. Um, uh, in the, the Christian Bible, um, uh, God asked uh, Abraham to, to sacrifice his firstborn These son. These are sacrifices done by people in their living state. Correct. Uh, for, for the Egyptians, it would be sacrifice something that is is truly beloved to you, because if you go into your your garden and sacrifice your your favorite ficus tree, if you you sacrifice your uh, favorite pet or favorite animal or goat, that doesn't have the same resonance as sacrificing something that truly truly has. Uh, um, value to you. And in today's world and in today's religions, that's cash. Oh, absolutely. Cash is king. I mean, uh, what else? Uh, we had talked a bit about, are there ways to sidetrack the process or, or do in, an end run? As you said, cash is key in our society. So if you go into a, a Catholic church now and they put around the collection plate and you know, you'll see one person puts in $20, another person will put in 100 but the twenty dollars might have been a greater sacrifice to that person, and it it's greatly depends on what is truly the greater sacrifice, and it is buying yourself a, a seat in the afterlife. And even the Egyptians had a way of of cheating their way past some of these texts. That's clear in in uh, chapter one twenty five in the Egyptian Book of the Dead. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So with, with the the ability to cheat, the the ability to sacrifice something that is beloved to you as part of your preparing to, to face Anubis, preparing to, to take your chance to get into the afterlife, that was paramount. That was the most important thing. I think it's important when you mention the, 
the twenty dollars from this person, the hundred dollars from this person. That twenty dollars could be all the money that person had in the world. The hundred dollars might be what that person earns in an hour. And exactly. So it's really it's it's not about equal uh, contribution. It's of it's it's about that level of, of sacrifice that's from that person's own own heart. Yeah, and is it truly a sacrifice? And um, Anubis is aware of the the difference, obviously. Yes, and the, the whole point of the, the weighing the heart is to see if that sacrifice was purely superficial or did it come from a place within you that you truly felt this was a sacrifice, this was something dear to you, as opposed to this is just my pet goat and I'll get another one tomorrow. Right, where that where someone else's goat might be all, all, the all entire the food wealth they have, yeah. or the or food or wealth of their of their of their family. Yes. Interesting. And yet uh, in modern religion, um, as we said, cash is king. You need more money to, to advance a cause. And so there's a bit of a uh, a, a catch twenty two. The hundred dollars is more important to the church than the twenty dollars. Yes, yeah, and it becomes more and more of how much are you spending this week? Oh, you spent a hundred dollars last week. Well, if you could afford a hundred dollars, can you afford one hundred and twenty-five, one hundred and fifty this week? The same thing goes in the ancient world. You sacrificed your uh, beloved wife so that she may join you in the afterlife. You know, was that truly a sacrifice? Did you miss her in the remainder of your life? to prepare, to, to give her a better afterlife. So it, it, it's things of, of that nature that the, the ancient gods were looking for. I don't think we want to condone uh, sacrificing your wife as an opportunity to, to uh, achieve a greater um, atonement in the <laughs> afterlife. So let's just uh, put that up as a, as a disclaimer right now. Yeah, and, and I think that that goes back to the story of, of Osiris and Isis. You know, Osiris was killed by his brother, chopped up and put into the Nile. Isis spent a year finding each individual piece of him and sewing him back together. Uh, and that was, again, her sacrifice was to spend that year to do nothing for herself but to, to, bring his, but to give his body a, a wholeness to, uh, in a, a proper uh, ceremonial burial, which in turn uh, she was granted her godhood when Osiris rose. More on this and uh, other subjects when we come back from this break. America Online is great. Bite that pizzas on wholesome little bagel. Welcome back to Ghost Seekers. I'm Charles Parley and uh, we'll be back again with uh, Matt Payne a little bit later. First though, I want to introduce you to my right hand man around here and that's Brian Parnell. Come on in Brian. Brian hasn't usually uh, been in front of the camera here. He's always behind the scenes, and uh, Brian's my assistant. Does a lot of research for me. Um, he hasn't really been involved in the uh, ghost-seeking world uh, per se. He's got some other um, uh, talents and uh, technical abilities that we make use of on the show. Uh, how are you enjoying the uh, your introduction to the uh, spiritual realm, Brian? Uh well, I mean, it's hard to. Uh I'm I'm curious. I, I'm definitely interested. I think uh, I'd like to to learn more. I don't really have a a strong for, strongly formulated uh, opinion yet. Okay, I think that's going to be very helpful to our viewers because you can kind of help give a sort of a seat of the pants view that isn't uh, sure. colored by um, the kind of research that uh, I've been doing or or uh, Matt has been doing and other guests that I have uh, lined up for the show. Um, what are your feelings uh, about ghosts? Do ghosts exist? I, I think that there's a... Uh, I mean, I, I, it's, it's certainly possible. Um, I don't think I've ever seen a ghost before. I certainly haven't been, like, uh, like not like not in the sort of, like, like terrified sense that you'd, uh, you know, like, imagine that it could be. Uh, uh, but, like, I, I, there's room for that possibility, I, I guess. So you're open to it? Yeah, I, I would say so. Okay, what about your friends? Have, they, have you ever uh, experienced anything... We, we talk a lot on this, uh, um, in this world about uh, creating ceremonies to um, draw out the spirit world, whether it be through 
uh, seances and uh, a summon ceremony, that kind of thing? Have you been involved with anything like that? Uh, not really. I, I'd say we spend most of our time playing video games, talking about girls, uh, watching okay. movies. movies. You know, yeah, yeah, there's another point. Movies. You've got some uh, favorite movies that might have uh, included the, um, the ghost world? Well, I, I mean, like, of course, uh, Ghostbusters is like an all-time favorite, but I don't really think of that as like, a, you know, <coughs> authentic. And there it is. I was hoping we weren't going to have to mention Ghostbusters on the <laughs> show, but uh, there it is right off the top. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, yeah, besides that, uh, well, you know, like, some horror movies can be good. I mean, like, I don't, Freddy Krueger's not really, like, a ghost, I guess, but, like, he gets you in his dreams. Mm hmm um, you get so, that heightened awareness. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that 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 idea that there's that there's there's something out there, right? I mean, that's that's what all these different kind of movies sort of allude to is like a, that supernatural element, right? That not you can't take the world just to. Well, face that's what value. we that's what we want to do on this show is is at least create an awareness, at least open up people's uh, minds to the possibilities that are out there, and possibly use some of the modern technology that we have. Uh, we've got some pretty sophisticated camera equipment and sound equipment. We want to get out of the studio as much as possible, and uh, probably eventually you'll be coming with me on some of these uh, treks into the world of, of uh, ghosts as well, where we'll go out in the world where people have said, here's where we think it's haunted, here's where a ghost might be, and we're going to try to record that and bring the evidence back to our show on Ghost Seekers. We'll be back with Matt Payne right after these messages. The ride. Ford F-150. Strength after strength after strength. Welcome back to Ghost Seekers. In this final segment, I want to discuss with uh, my colleague Matt um, the difference between the spiritual world and the physical world. There's a gap there, and this show is going to try to narrow that gap. What are some of the ways that we can do that? What you're looking for is <clears throat> the essence of a person that has passed over you're going to be be looking for either summoning rituals to, to bring things from that world to our world uh, areas where the veil that that breach that gap is thinnest and, and things of that nature uh, from from your from your point of view using your your technology and your your scientific mind to understand the quantum mechanics of it. Now, I'm willing to share my knowledge of the spiritual realm and see if we can mix the two together. Yeah, for me it's a scientific journey. It's not about, um, like you say, so much a spiritual uh, process. Um, I want documentation that we can share with others. And uh, for me, I consider these the, the material plane or the positive plane that we're all familiar with, the world we live in, and the negative plane where uh, the spiritual underworld that is unseen, but there's a there's an overlap, there's a mesh. We want to bring these a little closer. Um, one of the things that we want to try to experiment with is uh, time lapse photography, because there's an understanding that in the uh, spiritual world, time moves at a different rate than it does in our physical world. Um, what's your experience with that? I've heard stories over and over again uh, of people who have communicated with, with ghosts or with spirits that they have imparted knowledge of that, that the time has a, a very different meaning and a different pace in the spirit world. Uh, it, it seems to be uh, much slower, much more gradual, and much uh, uh, less prone to change. In the physical world, this pen might sit on the table here. Um, if we were to film it over the course of a week, it might move to here, one inch. Now, if we come in every day and look at it, we would never notice that it moved. Um, the presence of a ghost might be exerting tremendous force on that in order to move it to communicate with us in some way, yes. to set, make itself so that we are aware of its presence by moving something as simple as a pen one inch. Um, I think that time-lapse photography in an area of heightened activity 
might be our way of capturing that. Uh, so you're, that you're you're hoping to 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 my understanding, you're hoping to trigger that effect of a of a ghost or a spirit to to exert itself to spend that that spiritual energy. You're hoping to to trigger it to, to capture the capture them Phil. Exactly, and I think that's what our what our viewers want at home. They want documented proof. Uh, we've got the technology. We think we have the recording equipment that uh, is needed, and we want to go out there in the field and and uh, capture this um, for people who are interested in seeing ghosts. Well, I'll help you as best I can. Well, we're going to definitely draw on your experience in from the the spiritual. Uh, knowledge that you've gathered in your research and uh, combine it with our uh, our scientific uh, equipment and recording devices and uh, I think we'll be able to bring a lot of very interesting footage back for our viewers. We're out of time now for this week but join us again next week on Ghost Seekers. Mm -hmm.